Here in this video, we shall showcase the family tree of Venom and also a bit on the early creations by the god Null, more specifically the proto-symbiotes and the others of that sort, which would eventually lead to the birth of Venom himself and the others that will come after him. So let's get down to business. So before the universe was created, there was the god Null, who lived in darkness until the creation of the seventh cosmos that destroyed his peace and he decided to wage war on light and all creation. Billions of years ago, he went to war with the creators of life, that is, the Celestials, and managed to kill them with the all-black Necrosaur, the first proto-symbiote. Then he realized that he could control dragons of the Abyss and transform them into proto-symbiotes, like Grendel, Big Mother, and other symbiote dragons, like the World Killer. He also experimented using the head of the dead Celestial as a base for such experimentations and created the Void Knight and Mr. E around millions or billions of years ago. Mr. E would survive till the modern times, but the Void Knight was killed by Ego, the living planet, millions of years in the past. With them, he also created scores of old proto-symbiotes, which together with the dragons and others began to form a hive mind, putting the god Null as the leader. He went out to conquer and destroy the universe with his massive symbiote army. At some point, following the establishment of the symbiote hive billions of years ago in the past, the Dark Elder God Null constructed an artificial planet from the Living Abyss to serve as the throne world for his empire, and this was Glinta. After the destruction of the Symbiote Empire, ashamed of their dark past, the symbiotes of Glinta decided to spread and maintain peace throughout the cosmos by seeking out worthy hosts from various species in order to create an organization of noble warriors called the Agents of the Cosmos. However, many of the symbiotes were bonded to unworthy hosts, corrupting them with hatred, rage, and ravenous predatory hunger. These corrupted symbiotes were cast out by the symbiote's hive mind from Clintar, which took to forcibly cleansing those it captured and executing those who resisted or relapsed. After hundreds of generations of Clintar, there was a symbiote known as ZZZXX who was actually a mutant version who was able to completely control his host instead of creating a symbiotic bond like most of the alien race. However, he also consumed his host entirely instead of just feeding off of the adrenaline and other chemicals produced by the organic host and his brain. Then we also have a symbiote that came to Earth thousands of years ago during the Hyborian Age. Before it could find a host, it was captured in prison in an enchanted bottle meant for holding genies. This symbiote, which was unnamed, merged with the legendary Conan the Barbarian. Then we find out that the corrupted symbiotes can also lay eggs for future generations and one such egg bore the 998th generation symbiote known as Venom. And with this particular Clintar, we will see its family tree, which includes the clones, the forcibly generated offsprings, and also its natural offsprings, and their children as well. So firstly, here are the clones. The symbiote that would be later known as Mania was a clone of Venom, created by the Ararat Corporation from a piece of its tongue, intended to facilitate Bob's goals of exterminating all life on Earth. In another instance, when Eddie Brock separated from Venom, Traces of it were left in his body. Later, suffering from cancer, Mr. Negative used his powers to cure Eddie, and in the process, he accidentally infused the remnants of the symbiote in Eddie's bloodstream with his power and fused them to his white blood cells, creating anti-venom. Now we come to the next generation, the 999th generation of Clintars, starting with the ones created forcibly out of venom by the Life Foundation, which gave rise to five offsprings, namely Agony, Phage, Riot, Lasher and Scream. It is also here that we get to know that the offsprings of a particular symbiote is more powerful than the parent and more resilient as well. Although Riot in the movie was not stated as a child of Venom, but in canon he is and he along with the other four can combine to become the hybrid symbiote and together they are even more powerful in a collective form. So let's go to the natural children of Venom starting with Carnage. The original Carnage symbiote was the first offspring of the Venom symbiote, spawned when it broke Eddie Brock out of prison, or in the movie when Cletus Cassidy, the serial killer, bit Eddie Brock and got infected by a piece of the Venom symbiote. The newborn symbiote bonded to the serial killer, merging with his blood to become nigh inseparable from him, and then Carnage was born. Then we see the youngest child of Venom, and he is Sleeper which was very different in comparison to others. This particular symbiote was much different in appearance and did not take on some of the characteristics of the Venom symbiote, such as the trademark embellished white eyes. It was also a smug yet loyal symbiote who protected its host, even if it was prone to brutality from time to time. 
So now from Carnage we have three offsprings namely Toxin, Scorn and Raze. So born from Carnage as the 1000 symbiote in its lineage, Toxin was feared to be the strongest and most dangerous of their race as stated by both Carnage and Venom, besides Null. Scorn, another one, is a purple symbiote and the first cyborg of its species. It came to existence when the piece of its parent, the Carnage symbiote, was combined with a mechanical prothesis. Since its birth was linked robotically, the symbiote is a machine-slash-symbiote hybrid being able to fuse itself with different kinds of weapons. Then lastly we have the Ray's symbiote, which was born by Carnage and bonded with the former FBI Special Agent Claire Dixon as a part of a ritual involving the Dark Hole. The symbiote appeared to have died when it was absorbed into another symbiote to fight Carnage and the Eldritch God Cathon. And so with that, we end the history and the family tree of the Venom symbiotes, his lineage and legacy. So now we have come to the end of the video.